Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these by the laws in our hearts, we beseech thee.
us pray. O God, the King of glory, who has exalted thine only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph under thy kingdom in heaven, we beseech thee, leave us not comfortless, but send to us thine Holy Ghost to comfort us and exalt us unto the same place whither our Savior Christ is gone before, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the same Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we beseech the Almighty God, that like as we do believe thine only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into heaven, so we may also in heart and mind thither ascend, and with him continually dwell, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The epistle is written in the fourth chapter of the first epistle general of St. Peter, beginning at the seventh verse. The end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same to one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Here endeth the epistle. With you. The Holy Gospel is written in the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the 26th verse. Glory be to thee, o Lord. And Jesus said unto his disciples, When the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you the, from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. These things have I spoken unto you, that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things they will do unto you, because they have not known the Father, nor me. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye shall remember that I told you of them. Praise, Praise to thee, O Christ. I 
believe in one God. The Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten of faith, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from hell, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost to the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us. Under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the great and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who stayed by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning to all on this Sunday after Ascension Day and, of course, Mother's Day. The holy mysteries are offered to the honor and glory of Almighty God in thanksgiving for the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ and for the promise of the gift of the Holy Spirit in the hearts and lives of his faithful people. The Holy Eucharist we celebrate this week on Thursday at 10 a.m. and the study group will meet as usual on Thursday at 10.45 downstairs in the hall. We remember in our prayers today the sick, the sorrowful, the suffering, the dying, commending to God's mercy and care, Keith Illingworth. I visited him again this past week, and I've also spoken with Pat, and we'll be seeing her this coming week. For Drew, Marianne, Ernie, Gary, Peggy, Susan Nichols, Suzanne, Margaret Jansen, Jeanette Minette, Tony, for His Majesty the King, the Princess of Wales, and all who are receiving treatment for or recovering from cancer, and all who have desired our prayers and worthy as we are. We pray for Joe Kennedy, who, if my calendar is right, will be celebrating her birthday on Tuesday, that God may bless her with his grace and mercy as her years increase. Of your charity, I ask your prayers for myself as I celebrate the 27th anniversary of my ordination to the priesthood on Friday. You lucky people. So, and I pray that God may bless and guide me in my ministry among you. We continue in our prayers for, our, for peace in the world, particularly in the Middle East, for the end of the war in Ukraine, and prayer for all who are caught up in the violence and killing. We remember in our prayers the men and women of His Majesty's Canadian Forces serving at home and abroad, the men and women who serve as police officers and first responders, that God may bless and watch over them and their families. Finally, of your charity, I bid your prayers to the souls of the faithful departed, Remembering especially Charles Williams, Elizabeth Littner, Les Richards, Claude Haywood, our mothers and grandmothers who have gone before us marked with a sign of faith, and all whose years mine occurs at this time. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. Would you please stand? Dearly beloved, next Sunday, which is Whit Sunday, the celebration of the day of Pentecost, I intend through God's assistance to celebrate the Lord's Supper and to administer to all such as shall be devoutly disposed the most comfortable sacrament of the body and blood of Christ. 
to be by them re received in remembrance of his meritorious cross and passion, whereby alone we obtain remission of our sins and are made partakers of the kingdom of heaven. Wherefore, it is our duty to render most humble and hearty thanks to Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that he hath given his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, not only to die for us, but also to be our spiritual food and sustenance in the Holy Sacrament, which being so divine and comfortable thing to them who receive it worthily, and so dangerous to them that will presume to receive it unworthily, my duty is to exhort you in the mean season to consider the dignity of that holy mystery and the need of devout preparation for the receiving thereof, so that ye may come holy and clean to such a heavenly feast in the marriage garment required by God in Holy Scripture and received as worthy partakers of that holy table. The ways and means thereto is, first, to examine your lives and conduct by the rule of God's commandments, and wherein soever you shall perceive yourselves to have offended either by will, word, or deed, there to confess yourselves to Almighty God with full purpose of amendment of life. And if you shall perceive your offenses to be against your neighbors, then ye shall reconcile yourselves to them, being ready to make restitution. Ye must also be ready to forgive others that have offended you, as you would have forgiveness of your offenses at God's hand. Therefore, if any of you be a blasphemer of God, a hinderer, a slanderer of his word, an adulterer, or be in malice or envy, or in any other grievous crime, repent you of your sins, else come not to that holy table. And because it is requisite that no man should come to the Holy Communion, but with a full trust in God's mercy and with a quiet conscience, therefore, if there be any of you who by this means cannot quiet his own conscience herein, but requireth further comfort or counsel, let him come to me or to some other discreet minister of God's word and open his grief that by the ministry of God's holy word he may receive the benefit of absolution together with spiritual counsel and advice to the quieting of his conscience and the avoiding of all scruple and doubtfulness. I, for my part, will be ready to celebrate the Holy Eucharist and according to mine office, I call you in Christ's behalf to come to this heavenly feast. It is an easy matter for a man to say, I will not communicate because I have otherwise hindered with worldly business. But such excuses are not so easily accepted before God. If anyone say I am a grievous sinner and therefore I am afraid to come, wherein there do ye not repent and amend. For as the Son of God willingly yielded up his soul by death upon the cross for your salvation, it is your duty to receive the Holy Communion in remembrance of the sacrifice of his death as he himself commanded. Wherefore I bid you in God's name not to separate yourselves from your brethren, but to prepare yourselves and to come to feed upon the banquet of this most heavenly food. Amen. Please be seated. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat> For 40 days since his resurrection, Jesus encountered his apostles and disciples. It was for them an exciting time, but also a mysterious time. I've always been amused, maybe not the right word, but how our Lord encountered his apostles and disciples in their shock and they saw him crucified they knew he had died they had seen him buried they knew he had promised to rise again but there was still that element of doubt that element of hope within them and then he appears behind locked doors he appears to them walking on the road to Emmaus. My favorite one is they're Peter and John and James. They're fishing. It's early in the morning. They look over on the shore. Somebody's making breakfast. And they look closer. It's Jesus. Peter is so enthused that he jumps out of the boat and swims to shore. And they're still amazed. But Jesus gives them food. 
that which is fundamental to all hospitality. So people, there's the old saying, in sickness you bring flowers, in death you bring food. And that is part of it. They were consoled. There was something ordinary about that. We read, of course, that uh, in the, as he gathers with his apostles, they're shocked again. They, they just are trying to comprehend this. And what does he say? Do you have any food? You can almost imagine that. Food? Food? You, in this moment? Yes, because he wants to ground them. He wants to ground them in reality and also to show them, as he says, I'm not a ghost, I'm not a phantom, I'm not something of your imagination in grief. I am real, I live, I am with you now, I will be with you always. And they're excited by all of this for 40 days. And then he begins to shift as he prepared for them at the Holy Week, his passion and death and resurrection. So now he begins, he shifts, and he begins to tell them what's going to happen next. He is going to leave them again, at least physically. He's going to leave them. And he knows that's going to be once more a traumatic event for them. He promises them in Scripture I will not leave you orphans. The Greek of that word is hard to describe. Probably the better way would be to say, I will not leave you desolate. I will not leave you in despair. I will not leave you without hope. I will come again. And know that I am going to give you, as the gift of the Father, the gift of the Comforter. And when we think of that, their grief his death, their astounding joy at his resurrection, and a bit of the renewal of grief, knowing he's going to go from them again. I'm going to send you the comforter, the Father's gift, and it will be the gift, the spirit of truth. And once more, he promises them, I am with you always, every moment of every day to the end of time. In St. Mark's Gospel, we read then these words. The Lord Jesus, after he had spoken unto them, was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they're amazed. And we read in Luke's Gospel, and while they were gazing, or uh, the Acts of the Apostles, rather, while they were gazing up into heaven as he went, Two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing here, staring up into heaven? Understandably, the apostles were awestruck. They were caught in wonder. They were unable to go forward. Yet the Lord had called them to go forward. He had called them to mission and ministry. They're told to go to Jerusalem and to wait. Before Jesus had ascended to his father, in St. Mark's gospel, we have a larger portion of what Jesus said. We know this as his great commission, the mandate, mission, or statement of the church. All authority has given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the end of time. We can only imagine that transformation once more of the apostles. They see him ascend now into heaven. And ten days later, as we will celebrate next Sunday, Pentecost, the gift of the Spirit, the gift of the truth that will reveal all things to them, will remind them of all things that Jesus said and did. They had experienced a great deal. It had been life-altering, sometimes radical, sometimes traumatic, but certainly transforming. It would lead them to preach the gospel to the ends of the known world. 
it would embolden them even to sacrifice their own lives for the sake of the gospel. They were called to mission and ministry, not to stand there and stare, not to be frozen in grief, but to go forward in mission and ministry. And you and I, as the disciples today, we too are called to ministry and mission. We are called to be the ministers of Christ and the stewards of the mysteries of God. The world in which we live, the culture in which we witness to Christ crucified, risen, and ascended, is really not that different from pagan Rome, which was a secular society. It was polytheistic and yet atheistic. It was one seeking salvation for itself, but it was at odds within itself. Our faith in the teachings, the grace and the love of Jesus Christ makes all the difference as to who we are as people of faith. It makes all the difference in how we go about the call to mission and ministry. We have the words of eternal life. We have the means of the world's salvation. We have the faithful promises of Jesus Christ. We are men and women of faith. We are charged with the power and urgency of the Holy Spirit. We heard those words, the end is near. And it is. He is coming again. And this new reality, our life in the risen, ascended Christ, this urgency, that should be evident in our own lives. Like the apostles and the early disciples, we gather here, as they did in Jerusalem in the temple, we gather here in the house of God. We gather to be strengthened and renewed, but not to stand still, but to go forth to spread the gospel of Christ, that good news of salvation. The words of the angels to the apostles at the ascending, men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking up into heaven? In the name of Christ, let us go forth in mission and ministry until the Lord comes again. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord.
Brother, and pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God, the Father Almighty. The Lord receive the sacrifice of thy hands, to the grace and glory of his name, both of our benefit and that of all his holy church. Amen. Grant, O Lord, that this father's sacrifice may cleanse us from all our sins, and shed forth within our souls the strength of thy heavenly grace. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Let us pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace and grant unto thy servant Charles our King and to all that are put in authority under him that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially to me, thine unworthy servant, and those bishops in communion with me, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and living word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacrament. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with me heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them, who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those for whom our prayers are desired. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. Beseeching thee to grant them a place of refreshment, light, and peace. And we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, chiefly the glorious and most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, the holy patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, St. John the Evangelist, and all thy saints, beseeching thee to give us grace, that rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow their good examples, and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, Meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them, that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, 
pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sin. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. Through thy most dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who after his most glorious resurrection manifestly appeared to all his apostles and in their sight ascended up into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, thither we might also ascend and reign with him in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, <laughs> mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and it institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he prayed and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, 
do make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father almighty, world without end. Amen. Let us pray, as our Savior Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost. Throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. See you the 
given for thee. Preserve thy body and soul with everlasting life.
and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee that Thou didst graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of His mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of Thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, who hast vouchsafed to sanctify us with the sacred gifts of thy bounty, grant, we beseech thee, that we may ever continue to render thanks unto thee for the same. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit, depart in peace. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. From this time forth forevermore. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who hath made heaven and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you, and remain with you always. Amen.
So then she said, with Brenda next, I can say, so I have to tell, phone her and tell her that you're not I'm so She only has that thing. Wednesday and Tuesday. She said Tuesday will be Well, but for church, I had it as a new driver. And then um, uh, when when I came for church, he does the morning service before the service. No. Does the service before the service. So I didn't say anything. He just smiled. <laughs> I don't know. There's something about my book, baby. <laughs> Something catchy we can put together with the word Thursday. Yeah. Thursday. No more. No more. Yeah. Yeah. Something, something that's right on Thursday. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I have to move these candles. He's had a little low. So he said, the farmer said, we have to start later today because Nigel has to take something to his mother. So he came. He well, you, they, they, you were on your own for Easter, now Mother's Day. What is that? Oh, I forgot about Easter. Yeah, you can have to talk to Well, Nigel came here. Lovely.
through it to give you more control. Mm-hmm. Point it at the camera. And then you're going to hold the power button down. So once you get it, hold it, pull it down, you see it flashes. Mm-hmm. And then it turns off. It goes like that. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to go and put the remote down here. Now you're going to turn off 